Hello, rock stars, and welcome to Bandcamp. I am so excited to have y'all here with me. Um, to those of you that have made the leap from the original link, thank you so much. Um, the new link goes to putting together bundles. Oh, no. That is very upsetting to hear. Well, okay, give me just a second, Rockstars. If you were on the original link, you know we're having a little bit of a technical issue. Um, so I use a platform called StreamYard to go live. And somehow it got, it got disconnected from my YouTube. So I went to log in and it goes, you don't have any upcoming lives. And I'm like, there's a hundred people waiting on me. Yes, I do. So <laughs> give me just a second. Let me um, make, excuse me, a quick edit just to make sure that folks who are joining us now um, can find us. Oh dear, I'm about to get feedback. About to get feedback. Share, like audio feedback. Copy, let's make sure that that link goes where we want it to go. Dun, 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 dun. Perfect, okay. All right, I've troubleshot our link. Now let me find. Well, now it just doesn't even show the old live. Here it is, right here. Um, new link, new link. Um, we are having technical issues, so please join us at the link above instead. Those of you on the replay, thank you especially for your patience. Okay. And let me put... I wonder if I can edit this. Not from here, of course. That would be entirely too. Okay. Ta-da! Rockstars, I'm so, so glad to have you join us. There are 131 of you here right now, which is incredible. 1,800 rock stars registered for today's event. So I'm assuming folks will continue to join us. As we are getting uh, started, you're going to see me toggle over to that previous link every few minutes just to make sure everyone's fine to us, okay? I mean, really, what is a Rockstar Live event without some technical issues? Um, the other technical issue that we are facing today is I have strep again. It's so fun. It's not fun at all. I feel like I swallowed knives. So please forgive me if I need to pause at any point to cough, to drink some water, um, maybe even to make a, couple of, a cup of tea. You know what? I'm actually going to pause right now. I'm going to take some Advil. Um, because that's going to help keep my throat from swelling on us. Because here's the thing. We can face technical difficulties as rock stars and we can overcome them. And I don't know about you, but I have been really looking forward to this event. There we go. All right. We've taken our anti-inflammatories. I have been really looking forward to this event and come hell or high water, we are going to have an incredible time today. All right. Let me see some clapping emojis, some confetti emojis, some huzzahs in the chat. If you were just here and you were excited to have a fun time. Typically, uh, you know, historically, this week for me has been a week to lay around on the couch and not get a whole lot done. Um, but usually by about today, I'm like, okay, but I, like, I, I want something to do. And so I was like, you know what? We're going to have a band camp. It has been over a year since we had a band camp. Look at all those emojis. Oh, see, y'all are the best. Okay, I am going to, without further ado, dive right in. Let me do one more um, ping over here. I see that we have a birthday in the house. Happy birthday, Jody! I'm so glad you're here. Let me throw my slides up, and without further ado, we are going to dive right in. So, welcome to band camp. This is also an intro to foundation paper piecing course. That is our topic of the day. This is our second ever band camp. Um, and this is essentially a really fun event where we get together and I'm gonna teach y'all a skill. Now today I have three blocks on deck for us. I'm so excited about that. Um, my goal is for us to be here till three. I'm gonna be honest with you. If we go a little bit longer, I'm gonna keep going because I wanna make sure that y'all get to see three different kinds of blocks. And in fact, I've got some samples. Um, well, I thought I had all my samples here. Honestly, at this point, who knows? Who knows what I have and don't have? Where'd my block go? All right, well, I had one. The first one we're going to do is a string block. The second block that we're going to make is a little economy block. And the third block that we're going to get started on, but we'll probably not finish because it's going to take a while, is this penguin block that you see here on the screen. This is um, the kickoff block for our new block of the month. We are rebooting endangered species, but more on that in a second. 
Um, a few quick announcements. Like I said, we're going to be here till about three, possibly a little bit longer. There will be a replay. The replay is going to be staying up here on YouTube. So if you have to jump off at any point, you can come back and catch the rest. Or um, if you realize that you really want to be able to stitch along, but maybe you're not in your sewing room right now, you'll be able to come back and revisit this, okay? Now, if you're just tuning in and you do not yet have the workbook, let me copy this link. Oop, there we go. And you do not yet have the workbook, go drop your email in the box on this page. And it will take a second for it to get to you. But, and pardon my poor printing, I need to change my ink cartridges. Um, and we will send you the Confident Foundation Paper Piecing Workbook. Inside this workbook, you're gonna find kind of all the information that we're gonna go over today. What is foundation paper piecing, the tools you need, et cetera. But you're also gonna find instructions for the first two blocks that we're gonna be doing together, as well as the template for our square and a square block, okay? So have this handy if you're wanting to stitch along with me right now. If you do not yet have this printed out or you're just not in a place where you want to stitch along, get that and circle back and actually make these blocks, okay? All right. Now, if you're brand new, you may be thinking, who is this high-energy, fast-talking lady that has taken my screen by storm? My name is Holly Ann Knight. I am founder, CEO, and lead educator at Stringed Story. And it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. So I live in downtown Duluth, Georgia with my hubster and our two boys. You see them in the bottom right of the screen. Um, I'm also the proprietor at String and Story on Main, which is String and Story's brick and mortar shop. That's where I'm sitting right now. Um, and if you are anywhere near Duluth, Georgia or have an excuse to come this way, I would love to see you in person. In the meanwhile, I love connecting online with all of you. And so we do a lot of education here online via our YouTube channel, via our online courses, via our blog. So welcome to the Quilting Rockstar community if you're new. Um, if this is your first time tuning into a video with me, will you tell me that in the chat? Like I would love, I would love to see that um, and just be able to welcome you personally. Also, all of y'all who are offering all these fabulous emojis. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Um, yes, that link, if you've already signed up, then you already have your workbook. So you're good, okay? Can't access to the link to the workbook. You have it in your inbox, but it won't load it. <gasps> Yvonne, oh no. Why won't it load it? Yvonne, send us an email at hello, and I will make sure that you get it, all right? If, if you, like Yvonne, have registered for the event, you put your email in, you have the link to the workbook, but for some reason it's not loading, um, please send us an email at hello at stringandstory.com, and I will make sure that you get it. It's Joanna's first time, Jean's first time, uh, Char in C's first time, Nora, Christina, Shauna. Oh my gosh, Rockstars, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, I am here in Gwinnett County. That's exactly correct. All right. And Alicia is here live. That is also Alicia uh, floating in this photo right above John's head there. So Alicia, you're making a cameo. I love that. Lynn, you're here. Huzzah. Oh, Pauline, thank you. Uh, Julie's first time. Y'all are incredible. D uh, Daisy, welcome. Are you all ready? All right, let's, let's keep going. Now, I love to just show my hand anytime I am here live with y'all and something is going to happen at the end of our video. What is going to happen at the end of our time together is I'm going to tell you all about the endangered species block of the month. And I'm going to invite you to sign up. So I'm going to tell you right now because I don't like things to feel like a bait and switch. I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand here. I'm going to sit here and I'm truly going to teach foundation paper piecing for the next two hours. I also want you to know that I'm going to invite you to sign up for a paid block of the month with us. Okay. So if you know that that's not going to be your jam, when we get to the end of the teaching, you can bounce and I'm not going to be offended. I know that some of you already have patterns picked out and you're excited to just have the skills you need to do those patterns, okay? But for those of you that are interested in doing this incredible block of the month with me, it is, oh, it's so good, it's so good, y'all. Um, and you're interested in building your Aurifil thread collection, we are gonna be talking about that at the end of our time, all right? So tuck that in the back of your mind, maybe get kind of excited about it as we're going. Um, I do have all of those blocks here with me in person, and I have the original Aurifil sampler. Shout out to Kate Brennan. I don't know if she's able to be here in person, um, but she, uh, loaned me the original sampler to be able to play show and tell with y'all. And those of you who are local, you'll get to come see it hanging in the shop over the next couple of months. All right, Marilyn, I love that. And Linda, I'm so glad you're here. Jennifer, welcome. All right. So you know where we're headed ultimately, but we have a lot of fun things to do between now and then. 
because I have talked a mile a minute, are there any questions that I can go ahead and answer about jumping into this video together? Kyle says, here's the required band camp dad joke. How many trumpet players does it take to change a light bulb? Four, one for the bulb, one to do it faster, one to do it higher, and one to do it louder. <laughs> All right, Kyle, I need you and my hubster to get together. Uh, he is on a dad joke kick. The man's about to turn 32, and I feel uh, something, I feel like something has clicked with him that the, the dad jokes have really reached an all time high over the last couple of weeks. Um, Jean says, Can I purchase only the blocks that weren't in the 2021 color builder? So, Jean has spotted a really wonderful thing. She says, Some of these blocks look familiar. This is actually a reboot of the 2021 color builder. So, we did endangered species as a group. In 2021, all the blocks are the same gene. So you should have all 12. Yeah, great question. Um, Barbara, I so want you to do this quote with me. Um, Eve, I'm so glad you're here. Glenn, this is my second time listening to you. You're high energy even when you don't feel well. Well, I will say I, I have uh, antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, and a pile of vitamins in my system and a coffee. So we're going to do this. I just we're all too excited. I don't, I don't believe in rescheduling unless I just really cannot make it happen because we're all too excited for this to happen. Um, all right. Janet says, I have all the endangered species blocks of the months from last time. And that's my goal for this year. Janet, jump back in with us. That's awesome. You don't even have to sign up again. All right. Let's keep going. Holler at me if you've got more questions. So get out your workbook and we're going to start working through some of the educational bits at the front of that. Um, and then I will do another pause for questions during which I'm going to set up a second camera because I want y'all to really be able to look right over my shoulder as I'm doing this, um, as I'm doing this. Okay. Um, oh, Zoe, that's a good question. Zoe says, is there a rough estimate of how long each block takes to prep and piece? I wish I had a good estimate and maybe our stitching on the penguin at the end of our time together <coughs> will help you build a little bit of an idea for that. Some of them, like the elephant, definitely come together faster than others, like the tiger. Here, I'll make that comparison for you real quick. Um, but when I pieced this round, I was writing all the blogs and taking all the photos and making all the videos that are now a part of the curriculum for this block of the month. So it took me a lot longer than it would have otherwise. Barbara, I love that you're trying to decide which thread you want. We'll talk more about it at the end because I have thoughts. All right. Um, and technically, yes, I can ship out of the country this time. More on that at the end too, Nicole. So excited. Okay. So what is foundation paper piecing? Um, I got a couple of really important questions via email uh, leading up to this time. And one of the first questions I got was, is this the same as English paper piecing? Um, and no, it is not. So English paper piecing is generally done by hand. It uses identical tessellating shapes. Okay. So you're going to have like a hexi, half hex hexes, diamonds and the shape repeats in all directions and it creates kind of mirror images of itself, okay? So I think of that more like a tessellation. Foundation paper piecing, as you can see, even just in this tiger, uh, none of these pieces are the same. No two pieces are the same, okay? And so that sets it apart and it makes it much more of a precision piecing technique. And it uses paper as a stabilizing agent and as a way to actually shape your fabric. Because if I were to need to cut out this little purple stripe, right? How on earth am I going to manage that? How am I going to write directions for that for you, right? So this is, we instead use our paper as a template to create those shapes as we're going. And it creates a little bit of a paint by number for quilters, okay? Uh, so each of these, and I, we'll get into this as we get towards the end of our time, each of these sections, um, there was a little symbol color coding the sections as I was piecing it. Yes, it's a lot like painting with fabric, um, which Mary, as you can imagine, is part of why I got very excited to create the found or to create the free motion quilting education for these blocks because I really wanted to create that painting effect, right? Um, the link still has 90 people waiting. All right, come join us. Come join us here. Uh, nope, that's not the correct link. Shoot, whoops. Um. God bless. I know that I'm about to view a broadcast. <laughs> I love, I love the technology tries so hard to make sure I know what I'm doing. Issues with this link. Okay, there we go. Dropped another reminder over there. 
Thank you so much for letting me know, uh, Carmel. I, I want to make sure that folks find us. Okay, so it's a little bit like a paint by number with fabric. And as you can imagine, I got really excited about the idea of, found, of not only foundation paper piecing, but also free motion quilting these animals because they look so cool. All right. So then that leads to like, okay, this, if it's precision piecing and it's like painting, am I going to need a lot of special supplies? So short answer, no, slightly longer answer, maybe. Grace, I'm so glad you're here. You've basically missed nothing. We just got started because I was trying to give people time to find us. Okay, so the basic supplies that you need for foundation paper piecing are really straightforward. You need your sewing machine, all right? You need a size 14 um, or 16 needle. I like to use a thicker needle because we're going through paper. It's going to stay sharp a little bit longer. When you're piecing these blocks, whether it's this block or any other foundation paper piecing thing, put in a fresh needle when you start, put in a fresh needle when you end. Just like with scissors and with rotary blades, Sewing through paper, cutting through paper is going to dull your blades. It's going to dull your tools faster. So put in a fresh needle, change it again at the end. Okay. You're going to want cotton thread. I, of course, use Aurifel. Um, the original endangered species came with 40 weight. So um, typically I would say, of course, I use 50 weight. Um, you could also use 40 weight for these pieces. These pieces okay. You're going to need your pattern printed on paper, a rotary cutter, a mat. More on this super cool clear mat in a second. Um, and a ruler, all right? And then, of course, your fabric. Now, what's really fun, especially for these little blocks that we're going to get started with today, is this is a great scrap buster. Like, look at how small those little bits are. So I actually have a little scrap bin over here of this um, Wonderland fabric from Rifle Paper Company. Gosh, it's years old now. And we're going to put together some economy blocks. So when you're just getting started, especially with this template that I've provided in the workbook, pull out your scrap bin. Don't bust into your yardage yet. Um, when you're making a comprehensive project, like the Color Builder Endangered Species, you may want yardage, uh, but not for just getting started. Okay? So super basic supplies to get started. There are some optional supplies if you want to take it up a notch. And I'm going to be honest, I always work with these supplies at this point. Um, prior to doing endangered species, I was kind of hit or miss. Now I'm like, they're, they're worth every penny. So if you're tackling, it, whether it's the block of the month or any foundation paper piecing pattern, right? If you're tackling, um, any violet craft pattern, any, um, Pride and Joy quilting, Varushka Zarati, any of her patterns, any of Cassandra Beaver's foundation paper piece patterns. Um, who else does foundation paper piecing? Any, if you're doing any major project with foundation paper piecing, I want you to seriously consider investing in these items because they're going to save your sanity. Okay. So the first is the Daylight Company Wafer Light Box. Um, I reckon the one that I have that I'm going to show you out of the box is not this size. So I want to show you the size I actually recommend. This is the Wafer One. Um, it is about the size of a piece of paper. Okay. It's nine inches by 12 and a half inches. Um, and it is plenty big for just about anything you're going to need to do. Now, why do we need a light box? You need a light box because when we are putting fabric on these papers, right, here's your pattern. You're going to put the fabric on this side, and then you're going to sew from your pattern side. And you need to be able to see through to make sure that you've lined everything up correctly, okay? Now, I have wafer three. I don't know if there's a scenario in which you need a, a, a light box as big as this, but this is the way for three. You can see how it lit up my face. I want you to notice how thin this is. It's super durable, right? Steady, um, but it's thin. It's not bulky. That makes it really easy to store. I literally like prop it up behind a bookcase when I'm not using it, right? And then it has, as you see next to it, it has a cutting mat. And yes, we have cutting mats for the wafer ones as well. And this clear cutting mat allows the light to come through, but it means that you can make your one workstation do a lot of do a lot for you, right? You use the light to line up your fabric, and then as we start to trim the excess fabric and paper off, which I'll show you in a few minutes, um, you can do that right there on your mat. The final thing, if you invest in no other specialty tools, please spend the like less than ten dollars that an add a quarter ruler costs. I do not know if um. Lisa uh, Moose is here on this call, but shout out to Lisa, who lives in South Carolina. She is an OG quilting rock star. Um, and the first time I was doing foundation paper piecing, I think it was when I started 100 Days, 100 Blocks. 
Um, <laughs> the kinship sampler. I was doing the foundation paper piece version and I was just gonna use a regular ruler and trim my quarter inch seam allowance using the quarter inch line on my ruler. And she was like, honey, you need an add a quarter ruler. And I was like, no, I don't, no, I don't. I don't need all the notion-y things. Um, Yvonne, if you go to our shop, they're at the top of the shop, stringofstory.com forward slash shop. Um, and Lisa cried BS on my pride, essentially. And she got a hold of my address and she sent me this add a quarter ruler. And it's essentially a little, just it's a, it's a regular ruler, but this lip, I don't know how well y'all can see this, is a quarter inch wide. So when we go to trim our foundation paper pieces, and we need to trim everything to a quarter of an inch, right? Everything is still folded up like this. And we need to trim this seam allowance. It locks right on that fold at a quarter of an inch so that we get a flawless quarter of an inch without a ruler slipping around, okay? <coughs> Please excuse my cough. Let me take a sip of hot coffee. That is lukewarm at best, I'm gonna be honest with you. <clears throat> excuse me all right so if nothing else please invest in yourself and get this okay it's less than 10 bucks it's going to save your fingers like you're going to reduce your risk of cutting yourself substantially okay so consider this a safety investment all right so there's our supplies for foundation paper piecing any any questions about these supplies obviously as we get going into our next section you're going to actually get to see how i use them which reminds me let me get my Pull up my link. I'm going to set up my second camera because this is going to be a way better experience for y'all entering the studio. You can allow. Okay. Yes, that's fine. <coughs> I'm back there. Ooh. That was some wild feedback. I need to switch my camera around. Camera. Let me see. So far, so good. Quarter inch ruler is the best. Love that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> The technical difficulties continue. Keep those questions coming if you have them. And as always, I just beg your patience. I try very hard to be like cool and high tech. And the reality is that sometimes technology is weird. <laughs> That's, that just is what it is. Okay, I need to turn it this way though. There we go. iPhone, enter studio. All right, let's get y'all up on our tripod. Yep. I'll make sure this audio is turned all the way down so that we don't get feedback as much as possible. Do, do, do. Okay, there we are. Questions, questions, questions. Yes, the add an eighth ruler. Okay, so I'm glad that y'all brought this up. I do not currently have the add an eighth ruler um, in the string and story shop um, because I did this block of the month with just the add a quarter and it was great. But if you find that you want a narrower seam allowance, you absolutely can get an add an eighth as well. All right, great questions and points. Okay, I really need this audio to... I wonder if I could have not given it mic access. It will. Um, yes, if you like to do mini quilts, you're gonna find the add an eighth ruler to be helpful. So if that is any of y'all that you're working on something that you're like, I'm gonna need the add an eighth and you would like to get it from String and Story, send me an email, we can make that happen, okay? Um, signed up last week, don't have the workbook and can't find the link. Pamela, can you email me at hello at stringandstory.com and I will be making sure that y'all get the workbook. All right, okay. Let's keep going. First of all, we're gonna tackle the stitch and flip basic string blocks. So for this, you're gonna need just a piece of paper to use as your foundation. This is recycled wrapping paper. Let me pull this down. This is recycled wrapping paper. Um, I have used sandwich papers that I bought online um, and I have used printer paper. 
okay? Basically, when we're doing a string block like this, we're using the foundation paper um, to stabilize our quilting. So it's going to help our stripes. You know how sometimes if you do long stripes, they end up kind of bowed one way or the other, depending on whether or not you successfully switch which direction you're stitching from and all sorts of magic things, right? So in order to eliminate that bowing, we need to use a foundation paper. Um, and like I said, this is very simply a piece of wrapping paper, okay? We're also gonna need some strings or some strips of fabric. So this is where your scrap bin may come in handy. Let's see, let me dig through mine. I've got a couple of black ones here. These Are these big enough? They are brilliant. All right, anybody else that I want to use? I think this is good. All right, let me add my second camera to stream. Okay, see now it feels magic. Y'all saw behind the curtain, so you know that it wasn't as smooth and flawless as it appears. But yes, freezer paper works. Yes, all of these are great things. Now, over here on our machine, do you go ahead and reduce that stitch length? I'm going to go to like a 1.0 on my Bernina, okay? Um, that's going to make it easier to pull the papers out later, okay? Then you're going to take your paper and we're going to put our first stripe down. And this one is going to go right side up. Now, remember, I told you that when we get to our pattern, our economy block, we're going to be positioning the paper on one side and stitching on the other. And that is different with this because we're simply using our paper as a stabilizing agent here. So I'm going to lay this flat. And just I'm kind of pinning it in place so it can't go floating off. Notice that I am putting these pins nice and far away from both my edges, okay? And then I will take my next piece, my next little stripey stripe. And it is very long, so I'm going to whack it off so it's not as long as it currently is. And I'm just going to line it up on the edge here. This would be right sides together if these were both prints, okay? We're gonna drop our foot first so I can line myself up and then I'll drop my needle. Okay. Go ahead and do a little locking stitch. It'll just kind of keep everything in place. And notice, because we've shortened that stitch length, looking at it, I think that 1.0 is too short. That's going to be just a pain in the butt to continue stitching. So let's do, we'll do like 1.65. We don't want to destroy our paper by perforating it so much that it can't stay connected. We just want to make sure that it's going to be nice and easy to pull that paper off at the end. Okay. We'll go ahead and do a little back stitch just because it's going to help keep everybody stable and trim. And I'm actually going to drop my D back there. Okay, now let me see if I can give y'all a little. There we go. Now y'all can see over here a little better. This I'm just going to finger press open. Okay, now if you have the space, which I often do, but I've got my little sideboard covered up with other things, you can have um, a like mat and a little iron set up off to the side if you wanna be able to hit these seams in between every single one. If you have a little seam roller, this little guy, um, that works as well, it can roll like this. But let me tell you something, these are next to impossible to get your hands on right now because I tried to bring them into the String and Story Shop. Good luck, good luck. So if you have one, um, you're sitting on gold, consider yourself fortunate. Um, <laughs> But I just will finger press. I find that that works just as well. And uh, then I'll hit the whole thing with an iron at the end before I tear my papers out. Um, and when we get to more complicated patterns, like when we're talking about the penguin at the end of our time together, um, I will iron each section before I assemble the entire block. Now, notice again, I am just adding this on. Okay. Now, these are nice, tidily cut strips. So we have not had to do any trimming. 
if these were not tidily cut strips, we might trim our seam allowances at the end. But for right now, these are nicely sewn. This is just building up that practice of stitching and flipping with the paper underneath there, okay? See how straight and crisp those um, sections are staying? It's really lovely. All right, then we're gonna do another little black stripe. Um, let's see, or to, did I press opener to the black? I just am, I'm just pressing out, see? So I'm just pressing open each time as I continue going. Good questions. So this is how I did the version of Lanterns of Hope and Strength. I love that, Lydia. I actually was wondering that the other day because I was going through, you know, all my blogs and stuff. And I think I have a picture of your Lanterns of Hope and Strings on one of the blogs about this technique. So for those of you who are familiar with foundation paper piecing, you will recognize that this is um, a very simplified version of the technique. But if you've never done this before, I want you to make at least one string block just to kind of get the feel of having a paper as part of the process and to really see how working with foundation paper piecing will make your piecing much more crisp, okay? Minerva says, I've used um, muslin to sew my strings. Yes, I've heard that that is a good technique as well. That basically sewing strings because they can get so wobbly using whether it's paper or muslin to stabilize them. It's just going to make the whole thing a lot neater. Okay, now I've gone all the way off notice. I've made sure that my fabric is bigger than my paper. And I'm now going to start going the other direction. and do the exact same thing. Now, after we sew this one down, I also can pull those pins out because that center piece will be completely stitched to the paper. stab your fingers as you're pressing this open. Okay, so see here, I just am simply flipping this open and pressing down, okay? All of your stitches will be pressed to the side uh, when you're foundation paper piecing, unless you go back and kind of add it, add that open pressing later. Because when you flip it open and stitch it down, that's how it's gonna secure it. Um, when you're stitching different sections together, that's where you can choose to, to do a press open instead. But that's not until we get to much more complicated blocks. <laughs> Same thing, I'm just laying my right sides together. I think my cutting on this might have been a little wonky. I'm worried that this did not catch the black. So we're going to check that together. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, it did. Perfect. Press open, and then we're going to add one last black stripe over here. Yes, Yvonne, the paper is absolutely acting like a stabilizer exactly what's happening. So this is like a stitched in stabilizer. We're going to remove it later. So I guess it te that technically makes it want to cut away. Kate's not here for me to ask my stabilizer questions. I should just be a good student and go through stabilizer school. Um, is this the same process as the quilt as you go table runner pa uh, pattern? I don't know, Nora. I have not done quilt as you go. That is on my list one of these days to actually learn. Um, 
because I get asked about it a lot and I want to be able to speak to that. All right, I got to find my mat and my tiny iron, which I thought were right here. Hold, please. It must be over here. Do, 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 do. Well, there's the mat. There's the tiny iron. Okay. So this is what I normally have set up on this side space next to me. Um, I have the Aliso Mini. I've got a review of that on my blog. Uh, spoiler, I love it a lot. Let me tuck this out of my way so I can make room for my stuff. Because I don't want to put this on top of my cutting mat. That sounds like a disaster waiting to happen. All right. So see, I just put my nice little wool mat over here. And we're going to give this a quick press before we trim this and pull the papers out, okay? And that's how we make sure everything's nice and accurate. Let's see. Nora, I love that. Okay, so maybe I need to go learn it, and then we need to have, like, a band camp. Or maybe we need to have a band camp for me to learn quilt as you go. Maybe that's the plan. Um, Pam, I'm so sorry that that link is missing. It should have gotten sent out in the reminder email yesterday as well. Um, we seem to have had a few technical difficulties with it. So if any of y'all are missing the link to the workbook, um, send us an email at hello at stringofstory.com and Laurel and I will go through and make that make sure that gets sent to you, okay? Um, okay, so Jean says that it is very similar to Quilt As You Go. And yes, I'm sewing a quarter inch seam uh, to the, to all of these. And yes, you'll be able to go back and view the beginning of this. I bet tearaway would work well, Yvonne. Yeah. Which seam roller do I recommend? I would use a wooden one because it's going to have more weight to it. So if you can get your hands on a wooden one like this, I know the Violet Craft one is well beloved. It's the one I tried to get, but cannot get my hands on right now. All right, and I am, especially because this is wrapping paper, I am pressing from the fabric side. I don't need to risk sending wrapping paper up in flames today. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. That would make a band camp to remember. And then Holly Ann set her project on fire with her iron. 0% <laughs> of us want that. Want that. So it would make a, can you imagine the email subject line? That time I set my project on fire on live YouTube. Okay, so I've now pressed it. It's nice and crisp. Here, I can give y'all a close up over here too. It's nice and crisp. Look how fun that is. And I'm gonna set it on my mat over here and I have a handy dandy ruler. This is an eight and a half inch ruler. And I'm actually gonna come from the back. And line up. Can I do three quarters of an inch? Yes. We'll do three quarters of an inch. And that puts us at three quarters of an inch over there. I'm trying to make sure that my black stripes are even. And then I'm simply going to trim this down to size. So when we get to our next block, whoop, we will have a line to trim on to trim our blocks to size. If we're doing strings like this, we simply decide what block, what size block we want. So make sure we have paper that's bigger than that. And then when we trim it down, voila, we have this beautiful square block with our stripes all nice and even. And then we get to pull the paper out. So this is where that shortened stitch length came in handy because it's just like pulling on perforated paper. So I like to put my hand, you can see right there, it's kind of sticky because I have a piece of tape in the wrapping paper. Put my hand on one side like this kind of stabilize the fabric. I want to try to avoid distorting those stitches. And then just pull away on the other side, just like, like I said, just like it's perforated paper. And then we lift this side out and then we repeat. And we're going to go all the way across. And then this block would be ready to be pieced uh, to other blocks like it or into any project that we might be working on. Okay, let me, I should get my trash can a little closer. That would probably be handy of me. Same thing, lift it out. And then peel the perforations. Like I said, this is recycled wrapping paper. So there's a couple of places where there's tape, but I have to be careful how I pull on that. I don't want to pull those stitches. 
yes, the Violet Craft Ruler is the one I would recommend. And I will keep trying to get it in stock here. Um, but I've been trying for a couple of months to no avail. It's what happens when she's so popular. We are also hoping to bring in Violet Craft patterns in the new year because they're amazing. Um, oh, you get a rubber brayer from Blick. I love that. Ugh, Blick is everything, y'all. I love Blick. If you're not familiar and you like art supplies, just prepare. Prepare your spirit. Uh, and yes, a uh, roll, a wooden roller from the paint department will work well as well. Yeah, wallpaper. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Ta-da! So this is our very first type of block that we can make using a foundation paper. This is the simplest way to use a foundation paper because it's simply a basic stabilizer in order to make this beautiful stripy block. Okay. Any questions? about this. Yep. Hardware store. Absolutely. All right. So any questions about this basic stitch and flip string block? It's pretty straightforward. So I'm not surprised if you don't have any questions, but I want to make sure I give an opportunity. Um, Violet Craft Roller. R-O-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E it looks a lot like this, except it has a black handle that says Violet Craft on it. <laughs> Branding. <laughs> All right. From here, we're going to up the ante a little bit. Let me pull my slides back. Well, not quite. And we're going to make a square and a square block. Okay. This is also called an economy block uh, because of the way that it uses up little scraps. Um, and it's just a, it's a nifty way to fabric bus. Um, now, let's see. Do you ever sew all the way around the perimeters of your blocks? Generally, no. Um, but if you know that this block is going to float around for a while before it gets um, pieced into anything, um, or if you're just, you know, wanting to make sure that it's not going to fray, um, on this block that we're about to do where we're going to have... Um, there's no exposed bias edges, but just edges that are going to have gotten quite a bit of handling. It's not necessarily a bad idea. Absolutely stabilizing. Maureen, I'm so glad that you're here. Great news. We're, we're still going strong. We can answer all your questions and you'll be able to go back and catch the beginning. All right. So next up, this economy block. Let me pull that back down and we're going to get started. Now, I am going to fire up my light box. Oh, good. That doesn't blow out the video too much. I was worried that it was going to just absolutely make things crazy. So we're going to start. We're going to put, let me scoot you all over here. Boop, 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 boop. There you go. Now you can see real good. We're going to, you can see through this light box. You can see the grid behind. So we know our fabric is going to show up. Okay. And I'm going to dig in my bin over here and you can see other ones I've made. I've put teacups in the center. I put the Queen of Hearts in the center. I put Alice in the center. The White Rabbit. Here's another teacup. Okay. So our first thing to do is this block really lends itself to fussy cutting. So let's decide what we want to have live in the middle. All right. So I'm, I'm thinking about this fan. And the way that I'm going to determine that is I will put my fabric over it. Okay. And with that light shining through, I can see what is going to fit inside the boundaries of this section of the block. Now, I'm going to scoot you all over a little more. This is going to make it less cute from a aesthetic standpoint because you all are going to see my tripod. But I want you all to be able to see what I'm doing really, really well here. Okay. Can I zoom? No, of course not. Can I zoom over here? Nope. All right. So through here. Y'all can just barely see it. You can see the fan and you can see that on every edge, including this edge where the fan is really close, I have at least a quarter of an inch. So that means this is going to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this right side down because remember we're sewing from this side, but the pretty block is going to show up on that side. Okay. And we're going to line this up again. And I want... Trying to just kind of split where the fan is nicely. Okay. 
Um, I like the back stitch just because it's going to help when I'm pulling those papers out, uh, Trillia. It's going to help when I'm pulling the papers out to not accidentally pull my stitches out. Yep. Okay. We'll trim off in a second. Okay. So I'm going to pin this in place. And then we're going to start. Notice this is number one. Okay. Oh, there y'all can see the fan really good there when I lift it up. And our next piece is going to go over here. All right. So let's see. We'll use this lovely green for our next bit. Now, this is very, very large, and I just need that little triangle. So this is where using scraps is handy. As I drop my ruler on the floor. Another thing that's very on brand for me. And this little triangle is only three quarters of an inch deep. So we'll just cut a slot. Oh, I'm not even going to do it that way. We'll do it like this. We'll just slice a triangle off. Okay. Like I said, this is why it's scrap friendly. Now, when we sew, we always sew with our fabric right sides together. Always, always, always. I'm sure there's an exception, but for piecing quilts, okay? So ultimately, we're going to want this triangle to frame here. But we have to piece it right sides together. I want you to think about if this was a flying goose, okay? and you had a rectangle and you're adding a triangle to the side, it's ultimately going to flip up and be over here. But first we have to put the fabrics right sides together. Okay. This is where the light box really comes in handy because we need to be able to make sure that this line we're stitching on, we're going to have at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay. And that this whole block is going to be filled and then some, which we look great. These fabrics are a little dark, so seeing through is a little challenging, but one way that you can tell is see over here, this is a sewing needle, not a pin, that's why I can't find the end of it. See how over here I can see where my line is and then I can see where my fabric is? That means that I know I've got a good seam allowance. And then I cut this plenty large, okay? So we're gonna drop another pin in to hold that second piece of fabric. And we're gonna go sew just on this line. Okay, tracking with me? All right. <laughs> y'all didn't know y'all were getting a mobile camera experience today. I don't, some of y'all might've known that. Some of y'all have been around here a minute and know that I do this nonsense. Um, yes, you could also use a glue stick to hold that first piece of fabric to your paper. Okay. Double check yourself. We have right sides together. And notice this is true of the fabric and the um, paper as well, right? The, the two wrong sides are facing each other. So like sides are together. Make sure your fabric doesn't flip up on itself as you slide it underneath. I dropped my needle right before the start of that line. couple of stitches, a little back stitch, a little back stitch right at the end. Notice that I go like a stitch or two beyond the line on each end, okay? And that's just making sure that everything is staying super, super, super secure, okay? We can pull these pins out now because everything's all sewed together. This is where that add a quarter ruler comes in. Because when we fold this paper back, notice how, shall we say, generous our seam allowance is. And if we leave the fabric like that and we keep layering up the rest of this block, this thing is going to be a mile thick and we're not going to be able to quilt through it. Okay. So this is where the add a quarter, you lock that little edge right up against your paper. Notice I've only folded the paper back. My fabrics are still right sides together. I've not opened this up yet, nothing like that. Just folded the paper back and we're gonna trim our seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch, okay? And like this will now be useless. 
but this might be another triangle, okay? And then we fold open and give it a good finger crease so it stays nice and flat, okay? And you have made great progress already because you've done the first bit of this. All right, let me see what questions that I might have missed over here. Sorry about my shoulder. Um, trimming comes after stitching. Yes. Rochelle, you're here. Huzzah. Um, you know, I hadn't thought about using wrapping paper either. I was planning on using sandwich paper. Um, and I appear to have re-gifted my sandwich paper to another lucky quilter. Uh, so I was like, what do I have that will work well? Wrapping paper. Um, those magazine things that you get with like coupons in the mail work really well too. Newspaper, phone book pages, all of that. All right. And then you can buy specialty paper to print patterns on. I just use printer paper. It's, it's too much trouble to feed something special into my machine. Now, this was number one. This was number two. Now we have to do number three. All right. I'm going to keep y'all all up in my business. To see it one more time, and then we'll back y'all up a bit so that I can work a little faster so we're not here all day long. Okay, so this is gonna be my edge, and I'm kind of visualizing here. I can see through my through my page here or through my pattern. And I can kind of fold it back and go, okay, yes, that's gonna be. Big enough. In fact, we're going to scoot it this way just a little. Because remember, this is an economy block. So just like with flying geese, we want to make sure that these edges overlap enough for a nice secure seam. Okay. And then you can drop a pin in it if it makes you feel better. Or you can, you know, live on the edge and just bring it right over under your machine. Nope. Too far over. Flip up. This is why you should always put your foot down first. Pardon my questionable posture as I peer under the camera here. Okay, cut our threads. There are lots of trimmed threads. Peek at the back, nothing folded up funky. We're looking good. Um, if you're unsure if you're going to get enough coverage, you can take a moment to kind of flip it up and go, okay, okay, okay. We look good. We look good. Make sure you flip it back before you come back to your cutting mat. Fold only the paper down. Only the paper. I cannot emphasize that enough. Hi, Karen. And trim off that extra seam allowance. So you can see here, there wasn't a lot of extra from our seam allowance itself this time, but we got rid of this extra little bulk from one of our other pieces. Then same as before, we're gonna come around and flip this up into place. Look how cute this is looking already, y'all. How cute is that, okay? All right, I'm gonna back y'all up just a little bit so that I can work a little faster. And we're going to keep on going. I'll hold things up to the camera as I'm positioning it. Ooh, actually, let me move the leg of this tripod. There we go. And we're going to keep going. Any questions so far? Ask away, ask away. All right. Trim off another big old triangle. Come to the back. Two, three, four. Notice we're just counting up in numerical order on all of these. I'm gonna use my light box to line things up. Drop my foot first. Nope. Stitch. And flip. Now, you may be sitting here thinking a very important and relevant thing which is these pieces move kind of slowly. Like there's a lot of steps involved with doing this. Is this precision piecing worth the time essentially? Cause it, you know, it feels slow to put these pieces together. And the biggest thing I would remind you is one, yes, especially if you're making a very specific image that you could not do with traditional piecing. 
Um, but two, yes, uh, because we don't have to do any pre-cutting. This is, in fact, one of my favorite things. Kay, you're here. Huzzah. Um, this is one of my favorite things about foundation paper piecing is if you, like me, and I know that this is true of you because we had a whole chat about it during the Quilting Rockstars a couple weeks ago with Darcy, we asked y'all, what is the step of quilting that you hate the most? And of course, we talked about basting, but you know what else we talked about? We talked about cutting. There's no pre-cutting with this. I mean, I'll like whack off a chunk of my fabric, but there's no like standing at the cutting table reading a cutting chart for three hours while I get all my pieces ready, right? You pick your fabric and you kind of do it all at once. And so is it, it's not any faster than if you do your pre-cutting and then you sit down and piece. But I would wager that it's probably not a lot slower either. And especially if you're wanting to do some fussy cutting um, or you're just wanting that sense of getting a block together and you're not wanting to have to go track down cutting directions first. This You get to sit down and just start. You get to play with fabric straight out of the gate. You get to see your project, your progress on your project straight out of the gate. And that I find makes it immensely satisfying. All right, look at this. We finished our first round. Let me flip this up into place. Round one. Look how cute she is. All right, let's see. Questions, questions, questions. Hello, Donna. So the first thing to do is a three by five card and fold all the lines on the paper and it keeps you from missing a line. Trilla, can you explain? I'm not sure that I'm following. Um, let's see. Star points are amazing on paper piecing. No cutting is a bonus. Pauline, I agree. Um, Cheryl says, if you make a mistake, do you tear out a seam or just give up and start anew? Ooh, great question, Cheryl. All right, let us. This is part of why you don't want those stitches to be too small. Remember how I adjusted earlier? Okay. If you make a mistake, let's say that we need to take this piece off. All right. My good seam ripper keeps vanishing. All right. What you want to do now, normally I'm a big fan of like trim a couple of stitches and then like yank things apart when we need to rip things apart. But we got to be a little more delicate with this. Okay. So you're going to want to get actually underneath the stitch and pop individual stitches. So it's a little more tedious. If you're feeling bold, you could also come this way. Here, can you all see this? And we're going to unzip it, okay? But you got to make sure you don't catch the fabric, which is, you know, always a little nerve-wracking, especially when you've got back stitch. So I'm going to pop those back stitches. Just a gentle tug. Notice I'm tugging fabric, not paper. Because paper's perforated, it's going to tear. And then I can just gently unzip. So if you make a mistake, you put the wrong color somewhere. Um, your fabric isn't actually big enough, even though you thought it was going to be, right? We're just going to tease it apart. And we'll want to make sure that we kind of pull all these little fuzzy bits of thread out. Okay. And if you come to the back, if you finagle it very much, you will notice the paper is obviously weakened. It's been perforated. Okay. But you can, I've done two or three corrections on a section and it's held up just fine. All right, it, that's the other nice thing. Here, we'll re-sew this. That's the other nice thing about larger patterns is that they're usually divided down into smaller sections. So even if, let's say, your paper actually fell apart and you felt the need to start over, you would just be restarting that section. You wouldn't have to restart the whole quilt or the whole project. Um, I also have been known to just, yeah, just put a piece of scotch tape to hold the paper together right there if I need to, rather than start over on a whole section, okay? So see, voila! All right, good question. Yep, you can pop it from the paper side. Rosemary, I'm so glad you're here! Um, when doing a larger pattern, is it helpful to start? Yes, I will start an entire section at a time when I'm doing that. Okay, so we've counted up. One, two, three, four, five. So next is six. I'm going to pick a new fabric for our next section. Where'd that pink go? I think that pink will look nice, don't you? 
Now, keep in mind, these triangles are getting bigger with every round, okay? Another teacher suggests using the light box or a window to trace your pattern to the back side of your printed pattern and label the printed side fabric and label the trace side So, Oh, that's an interesting idea, Carmel. Um, I will say my only um, hesitation about it is that extra steps, and extra steps create friction for me and I'm less likely to just do the thing. Did I cut that big enough? I did, okay. So if you find that that serves you to have the, the pattern on both sides, like absolutely rock on. I would never take the time to trace it. I would end up just simply not doing it. Um, I like to backstitch Marilyn at least some of the time because it, it just stabilizes the whole situation. But I try to only do like a stitch or two. But you don't have to. And and when I get in a hurry, then I will skip it because that's, you know, how things work, right? Um, oh, my gosh. Yvonne, I'm so glad that you brought that up. <laughs> Yvonne, everyone's going to think you're a plant. I did not plant her to say this. Um, do remember, if you're looking at the light box or as we get into talking about uh, color builders at the end of our time together, and I will talk to you all about the fabric bundle that we have. We do have a sale going on right now in our online shop that all orders over a hundred dollars are twenty percent off, um, and free shipping for domestic purchasers. So, I'm just saying, it's a really good time to treat yourself to a new project for the new year. Um, let's see, Meta says, can you pre-fold along the lines instead of tracing them? You probably could. I would be a little wary of weakening the paper, uh, too much would be my only thought with that. Yeah. Great question. Um, Linda says, do you do freezer paper piecing? Don't have to rip the paper off. It just rolls off. Um, so I did not done it as freezer paper piecing. Um, I've heard about freezer paper applique. Um, and I, yeah, I've heard of a few different techniques that use freezer paper, but I have not personally done any of them. Um, I also know folks, and y'all may have seen this before, I know folks that they like to trace all of their pieces, like all the shapes onto fabric and cut out the exact shape ahead of time. Again, I find that tedious and I would not do it. Oh, I need to go this way. Six, seven. I like techniques that allow me to really take the bull by the horns and just jump in and get into motion. But I will say what I say for uh, free motion quilting as well. I do not consider myself a show quilter. That's not what I'm aspiring to, which means that I'm never aspiring to perfection. I'm not. That's that's not a part of my sewing experience. Um, and so I want joy units. So things that make it feel fun, that make it feel light. Um, I love foundation paper piecing too, because I don't have to keep track of pieces cut to a certain size. Um, it makes it really easy to have projects that you can kind of pick up and put down. So like my 100 days, 100 blocks, I have my fabric, I have my patterns, like my foundations. And just when I get a chance, I pick it up and make a block. And then I tuck it away again, and I don't worry about it until the next time I'm ready to make a block. And it just, it makes it really, it makes it a low stress project for me. And because I'm not aspiring to perfection, it also means that if I have to pick something out because I didn't quite get it right the first time, I'm just not that worried about it. Um, oh my gosh, Sharon, I'm so glad that this has made this easy. <laughs> Here's the thing. This technique gets a reputation, right? I don't know about you, but when I first heard about foundation paper piecing and I was like, what in the heck is that? Someone was like, it's like Ginger Rogers to Fred Astaire. It's just like regular piecing except you have to do everything backwards and in high heels. And it terrified me, honestly. I was like, listen, I was a whole ballerina. I did ballroom in college, and that still sounds overwhelming. Just real talk. And then when I actually learned how to foundation paper piece, I was like, wait a second. With the right tools, this is actually really straightforward. You just have to remember that you're sewing on a different side than your block is showing up on. But that kind of, it kind of makes it like those scratch-offs. Ian's really into those scratch-offs, right? Where it's like rainbow underneath and then it's got like the black waxy stuff and you can scratch through it to create designs. 
that it's a little bit like you're revealing this treasure every time you flip your paper over and you get to see the next layer of what you're doing. And I love that a lot. It makes it really fun. Um, oh, you just got here, Sue. I'm so glad. Yes, go back and watch from the beginning. Uh, we are having a big old time. Um, feel free to skip forward if you're watching the replay. So if you got here late and you're going to go back and watch the beginning, feel free to skip forward through the first like five to eight minutes. Um, we had some technical issues at the beginning. And so we were just resolving those together at the beginning. So you can skip that bit. Um, Yvonne says, I tried this once by myself. It was absolutely awful for me. I had one seam I tried four times before it was in the right place. Now I feel like I want to try it again. Yay! That makes me feel like I've succeeded today, Yvonne. Um, is 100 Days, 100 Blocks detailed in a blog post? I do not run 100 Days, 100 Blocks. Um, Gnome Angel usually runs it. She created the kinship sampler that I did for my 100 Days. She's done a few different ones. Um, so go check her out if you want to learn more about that. It's a fun pattern. My headshot where I'm like this and there's that colorful wall behind me, that's my 100 Days blocks up on the design wall. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. Ooh, Kate, I knew that you would have something good about stabilizers when you got here. Um, Kate says, I don't know if you said this yet, Hack, but if you embroider, you might use Ultra Clean and Tear from OESD. Um, you can print with ink paper on that and use it for FPP, and then it washes out. Stop it. That's so cool. So there's that. I knew Kate would have something cool about stabilizers. We were talking about you before you got here, Kate. I was, so we were talking about tearaway stabilizers and I was like, if Kate was here, she would be able to tell us more about this. Okay. Second round complete. We need another dark color. What do we want to use next? Let's see. Oh dear. I'm still singing Christmas songs. Black. How do we feel about black? Also, can we talk about how much I love this fabric? I, mm -hmm, that's the move. Okay. All right. Now something else you may have seen me do camera over here as you may have seen me kind of eyeball my sections before I trim my paper so I'll kind of be like all right if I trim down here somewhere it's going to be plenty big and let me tell you Yvonne and uh, I believe it was Sharon some of y'all who um, have tried this before and did not have success and you're wanting to go try it again let me tell you the number one mistake and I'm going to put that in problem quotes because y'all know I don't like the word mistake right I don't like to put pressure on something that we're doing for fun and make it sound like there's, you know, really hard answers where there isn't event. But let me tell you, one of the, one of the self-created challenges that I see rock stars do when they're learning the foundation paper piece for the first time is we're scared of wasting fabric. And so in the name of waste, no, not wasting fabric, you cut your pieces. So you have like a hair and a half of margin on either side of this line and if you don't get it lined up just right, it's not going to fit. Your seam allowances aren't going to be right. You're going to have to rip that seam out. And let me tell you, the seven threads of wasted fabric is worth it for your sanity. Okay? I want us all to be responsible consumers. We don't need to be unnecessarily wasteful. But have you all seen the average size of what I'm cutting off of here? Right? Like, it's worth it. It's worth it for your sanity, okay? So cut it a little big. And if you end up having a big chunk left, when you trim it off, then you can use it in some little bit somewhere else. I mean, think about that over here, right? When I'm, when I'm making these pieces, if I have something big, if I do this piece, right? And I have substantial one inch strips coming off of there. Well, guess what? They're gonna turn into one of these other stripes. Right? They're going to look at how tiny this little iris is. That tiny little one inch square of black from somewhere else on another block becomes the tiger's iris. Right? So work bigger. You can repurpose those pieces into other sections of your foundation paper piecing. Okay? Now, I have not said this line because I want to make sure I show you all something. On this pattern, the block ends at the solid line. Between the solid line, oh, let me hold this up closer. Between the solid line and the dotted line is your seam allowance, okay? Which means when we do the final trim down of this, we're going to rotator cut. 
we're going to rotary cut on the dotted line. Okay. That means that as these pieces are overlapping up here, we need lots of clearance all the way past this dotted line for that final round, or you're going to end up with a little block blowout. Let me find my example because I know I have one. Here we go. You don't want to end up like this. See how my piece did not extend all the way up. And so now when I piece into this, I will either have a tiny little bit of exposed fabric or I'm going to lose my point. Okay. Because I did not make sure my piece was big enough. That means I've created a sanity problem for future Holly Ann. Not only is it going to cost me present joy units and sanity if I don't cut my pieces big enough, it's going to create a problem for future Holly Ann. So make sure they're big enough is what I'm arriving at here. That being said, every single one of us, every single one of us who has done any foundation paper piecing has thought we cut a piece plenty big only to realize that geometry is really weird. Okay. And like right now we're working with very standard triangles. There are no standard triangles on this. Everything's weird on this. Right. And so every single one of us has had a moment where we thought we had cut a piece big enough, but the way that that flips out into the shape that it needs to fill, it just wasn't and it didn't work out. So as much as I have now harped on, save your sanity, cut your pieces big, also know that you, you won't get it perfect, okay? We're looking at progress, not perfection. And I don't want you to go, oh, Holly Ann told me to cut it big and I did it. I'm a failure. Please kindly ask that inner mean grump. It doesn't even need to go take a coffee break. It just needs to go jump off a cliff, okay? It just needs to go jump off a cliff because we're not here for that kind of self-criticism, especially, especially if you are new to this technique, okay? I might be done with my soapbox. I might not. <laughs> All right. Oh, this is, look, mm, she pretty. <laughs> All right, number 11. Let me make sure you're big enough. Um, can this video be added to Kajabi? John, I don't know because it's going to be so long. But it will live on YouTube and you can come back to it. I can at least make sure a link is added to Kajabi. How's that? For those of you who have already jumped into color builders, I will make sure that a link gets added to Kajabi. Were you big enough? Uh-oh. Did I just not listen to my own advice? We're about to find out. Did I get excited and fail to make this big enough? Nope. It, okay. Here's an important thing. Notice when I am sewing this, right? As I'm looking at this, I'm like, is there enough fabric? When it flips open, yes, I'm filling the whole area I need to fill just fine, okay? So that's why you'll see me sometimes flip my fabric up and check it. All, if you have any doubt whatsoever, check your fabric before you trim your seam allowance, okay? All right. Let's see. There's always fabric waste with this technique. There's really no way around it. It's the price to pay for accuracy. So I love that. Um, and, and I think it's also worth considering that there's really fabric waste with any technique that we do, right? It's really, really rare that we're not going to have trimmings off of something, whether it's from squaring up blocks or from cutting yardage and having weird bits left over at the end of the cut, et cetera. Um, if you are not in this year's Color Builders, this will live on YouTube, and that's how you can access it. Um, yeah. Otherwise that creates a lot of admin to have to create a special login. So if you are not participating in this year's color builders, you can access this here on YouTube. It's going to continue living here. Great question. Now I'm looking at my fabric and I'm like, okay, I have two triangles left and I'm just going to be mindful of how I slice this to make sure that I have enough for both. And I, I think I've succeeded. Yes. I think I've succeeded. 
But that's the thing is you can reduce waste by just kind of paying attention to what step you're on. Um, using scraps from previous sections, etc. But knowing that some waste, it's just part of what we do. Because the most efficient way to use fabric is to not cut it up and sew it back together. <laughs> it turns out that cutting up fabric and sewing it back together creates waste. <laughs> For non-symmetric shapes, it helps to fold back the paper and cut your fabric based on that orientation. Ooh, so when I will have to look at that in a second as we get into this penguin and see if I can demonstrate that. I'm, I think I followed, but I'm not sure. <laughs> then you get to buy more fabric. I love that. <laughs> I like the way y'all think. Where did where'd this go? Here we go. Y'all, I'm so proud of me. I think I might have actually gauged our time, like, kind of right on the money. I might go over a little bit, but not too bad. All right. One section left. I'm going to plug in my iron so that it's ready when we get there. Normally, if I were just sitting here working, I would honestly leave my iron plugged in. Um but I know that I'm kind of taking my time since I'm teaching and I don't want to run the risk of getting burned while I'm teaching y'all. Forgetting about it over there and searing myself. All right. Now, another note, and I will repeat this as we move on to our next block. On this block, this economy block, each of these triangles has three sisters, right? It's four identical triangles going around. And so going in perfect number order is a little bit less relevant as a result. By the way, if you have something like this where your stitching lines have overlapped, you just pull the paper back and then fold it in order to cut it, okay? When we get to the penguin, which we're gonna start on in a moment, it will really matter that you go in number order because those, those um, pieces have been designed to fit together a particular way. Now, I saw that one of y'all Okay, Daisy says, uh, trimmings aren't waste, they're stuffing for dog beds. I love that. I love that. Um, one of y'all said, I thought I saw this. If I want to create my own pattern, is there a formula to know how to number your pieces? I know that Electric Quilt um, has a foundation paper piecing option within it. I have never designed a foundation paper piece pattern. Um, I have been low-key bugging Varushka Zarati to write a course on how to do that. Um, I don't know if she's done that or not, because I think that would be really fun to learn. I would love to be able to design foundation paper piece patterns. Um, and it is not something that has kind of intuitively come to me. It's like, oh, that's how I would do that. Um, so I'm not the person to ask about designing uh, patterns of this technique. Um, I would go research folks who write these patterns. So Cassandra Bieber, uh, Varushka Zarati, uh, No Angel, and others. I threw out a bunch of names earlier in our time together and see if any of them have resources. Yeah. All right. Same thing. I have pressed. See how nice and crisp it is. Now, one little note. At this stage, while the papers are still in, if you press, and this block did just fine, but if you were to press and you were to find that, you know, maybe your finger pressing didn't get these seams quite crisp and you're wanting it to look a little crisper before you trim it, then I would starch. I would hit this with your hot iron, spray it with some starch, let it sit a second, and then press it again. Do that all from this side, not this side, because then your paper's just gonna make a mess. Do all that from your fabric side, okay? And then make sure the paper dries before you pull it out, okay? And then here, let me pull this over so you can see. Linda, I saw your question about the penguin. I'm gonna answer you in just a second.
this is where we are going to cut on this dotted line. So I can line up the little edge. It's just sitting on top of the paper on the solid line. And then my rotary cutter is going to go across the dotted line. Now, this piece of fabric is big enough that it could grow up to be something on another block. So I'm going to pull that extra bit off and we'll set that over there to save. And then I'm going to just rotate and repeat all the way around. Again, just saving any pieces that are big enough to be something in another block. Those are not. And voila, we have made a gorgeous economy block, complete with fussy cutting. This is my favorite way to fussy cut because you can just line it up, okay? All right, let me back this up over here again. And then I'm gonna answer your questions before we move on to our final section. All right, let's see. Uh, Linda says, I did not get the penguin pattern. That is correct. So the penguin pattern is not free. It is part of our block of the month. So there are, I don't know, 30, 40 of y'all that have already signed up for Endangered Species 2023, plus the 100 or so of y'all who took Endangered Species with me in 2021, y'all already have this pattern. Um, if you just signed up for Endangered Species and you're like, where? It means I still need to add you to Kajabi. I'll be doing a round of that at the end of today. So this is a pattern that is included in our block of the month, which we're gonna talk more about at the end of our time together. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate it for you because if you're here and you're thinking about joining the block of the month, um, because it's a next step, right? It's it's a step beyond this skill. I wanted to actually demonstrate it for you so that you feel equipped to jump into these animals, even if you're just now learning foundation paper piecing for the first time with me, okay? So that's the deal with that. Um, Angie does her 100 Days 100 Blocks um, with FPP and traditional piecing. That is correct, Belinda. So she usually has templates or cutting instructions for the traditionally pieced version. And then there's also the foundation paper piece version. When I did it, I did foundation paper piecing. One, because I was learning foundation paper piecing and wanted to practice. Um, two, because I wanted to fussy cut. And it's, I find it easier to fussy cut by just being able to line it up on the paper. Yep. Someone says I bought EQ8 in uh, November and it's fantastic. Wish I bought it years ago. It does work for FPP, great. But for me, my graph paper and colored pencils and paper scissors are history. That's amazing. I love that. Way to, way to upgrade and invest in yourself, Selwyn. Give me a holler if you're going to start designing patterns. I want to know more about that. Okay. For those of you that are already in Endangered Species, and if y'all have more questions, please ask them. Um, this is traditionally the December block. But as we have uh, kicked this off in December, we are starting at the end, so to speak, and tackling this first. By the way, you'll notice my printing here is orange. That's a printer problem. Um, let's see. I missed whether or not you sewed the solid square around at the end before you trimmed the square. I did not. Um, I do not usually sew around the edge one more time. Um, if you're concerned about fraying, you absolutely could, but you do not have to. Yep. Um, and when I remove the paper, I do not press the seams open. They're all kind of up on top of each other. So that would be really, really tricky to do, and it wouldn't be smooth. What you could do is when you're joining this block to another block, so if I put these two together, right, sew them together, I could press this seam open if I wanted to reduce bulk on part of this project. Yep. All right. So in here, you're going to see that all of these sections have little color coding on it as to what is what. All right. And do I have tape handy to tape together my two A's? Let's see if I do. Oh. One more important note, when you are printing any foundation paper piece pattern, um, obviously the economy blocks were an exception to this because these were not part of a bigger thing that absolutely had to fit at a certain scale. Um, but if you if you buy any foundation paper piece patterns or if you join the color builders block of the month, you will notice there's always a one inch square in the corner. And it's designed that if your, your printer prints at 100% on eight and a half by 11 paper, 
it should measure an inch. But it's always a good idea. Mine is maybe like a 16th off, which is not a big deal to me. But if that's, a, if that's really going to matter to you, then you would need to adjust your printer settings. So it's always a good idea to print your first page of your pattern and check your printing scale, okay? All right, let me grab my tape, and I'm going to show y'all how to assemble multi-piece patterns. Tape, 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 tape. And let's pull these slides back down so y'all can actually see what I'm doing. All right. Now, this has Penguin A1, Penguin A2. So I'm going to take my paper scissors. Did y'all see that meme that went around on social media? And it was like, I used my mom's fabric scissors for wrapping paper, and now the cops are here. Absolute facts. Absolute facts. All right. Now, I'm going to cut this pattern piece out, leaving a little wiggle room around my solid line, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing for A2. Now, when you have a pattern, so this, notice that this pink one, there's lots of different sections. Here's piece E, piece D, piece B, piece C. Was it still over on this page? Oh, let me unplug my iron because I smell it. Right? All of these are ultimately going to come together to create this wonderful penguin block. Okay? But we're going to work them in sections. And when you have a piece like this, that it comes in two bits, it just means that it was too big to print oriented on the paper. Okay? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which of these I want to go on the top, right? Because we need to line up these circles. And I'm going to trim directly on that blue line. Okay. Get my piece of tape handy. Kyle, what do you, uh, or excuse me, Kate, sewing the blocks together. What, what question do you have about sewing the blocks together? That's a great question. And we're going to play a matching game. And we're going to line up that circle. And we're also going to make sure that our other lines are lined up. So in this pattern, this inner line is going to be the edge of the block. The outer line is your seam allowance or the edge of the section. The outer line is your seam allowance. And we're going to drop a piece of tape there. And then I usually go and I actually tape the front and back. I like this to be pretty stable when I'm working, so it's not going to flip up and cause me cause me problems later. By the way, when I say it cause me problems later, the problems I'm referring to are completely fictional in my head. I've never had it cause me problems. I just don't want it to. I don't want to find out. It's the, the graph paper or the graph that's been going around on social, the F around and find out, right? I don't want to F around and find out. So I just like to make sure it's nice and secure, tape both sides. And now this is piece A. It does not matter that these edges are jaggedy because that is outside my seam allowance. Okay. And we will notice if we look way down in here, this is a penguin head with an eye, right? Piece number one is this tiny little pink piece in here. Okay. Enter the fabric for this project. Patook. <laughs> this is the Orville Color Builders 2023 Block of the Month Fabric Bundle. This is a cool 17 yards of fabric. Um, you will have excess on this. Um, if you look at, if you're part of Color Builders already, and you look at the fabric instructions, it's going, um, yes, you're getting this, oh, to get your sewing lines to match. Yes, Kate, that's a great point. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, if you are in the program and you look at the uh, fabric requirements, you'll notice that some of them is like three inches by width of fabric. I made the kits that way one time. One, it doesn't give you a ton of extra. So if you mess up, it's kind of not great. Um, and two, it's a pain to make kits, right? So instead, we rounded up to the nearest quarter yard. So you're going to get extra fabric this year. Remember, we're having that lovely 20% off sale. Uh, but it also means if you're brand new at this, 
that you've got some wiggle room in case something goes wrong and you miscut something or you're still kind of learning how to be more efficient or if you want to make more than one of a couple of the blocks, okay? So early in the pattern, there's going to be a fabric key. Okay? See? Little codes that are going to show up on the patterns. Okay? So I need a light pink, a light violet. Here's my light pink. I have a conversion chart for y'all inside of Kajabi, okay, that tells you that light pink is carnation. So I'm going to pull that out. I know I'm going to need my hot pink. I'm going to need my light violet, which is down here. Lavender. My dark violet, that's amethyst. Nope. Oh. And I just made my purple. I'm trying to pull these out without undoing this yarn, and that may not be my best. That may not be my best choice. And then I need white, neutral gray, and black. Those are here at the back. You'll notice when you get this bundle that they're in sets of threes. A light, medium, and dark gray. A light, medium, and dark red. A light, medium, and dark green. A light, medium, and dark taupe. A light, medium, and dark pink. Light, medium, and dark blue. And so on and so forth. Okay, so they're organized according to the color family which matches the thread boxes, right? White, gray, and black is December. And your thread colors. Here's the white, gray, and black from the bottom of the stack, okay? Um, but you're going to pull colors from different months in the fabric for um, making your blocks, okay? Um, Kajabi is our course platform, Barbara, that we use for all of our online education. So for this block of the month, um, all of the patterns and everything are released inside Kajabi. All right, and then I also need a light gray, which is aluminum. So here's all my colors. And we can start working from here. So for piece A, according to my chart, that tiny little piece number one is light pink. So we're going to pull off carnation. And we're going to slice off a little corner. Obviously, much larger than it's ultimately going to need to be. But we also have to keep in, uh, keep in mind that we need our seam allowances. And then I'm going to pin it. See, here's our number two. I'm going to pin it on this side so that it can stay nice and secure even as we attach piece number two. Okay? Piece number two is black. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over, we're going to find a corner, first of all, because I often will just work off of corners. Another thing you can do, like this is quite a large yardage piece, you use black in almost every block, and so it doesn't ever look like a whole lot of black, but it adds up. Um, another thing I like to do is I will just cut a strip off, and then work from that, so that I don't have to constantly finagle with my yardage. So then I can fold this back up and set this big part to the side and not have to worry about it. And I have a little bit of black to work from, okay? Now, those of you who are a quick study, which I suspect is all of you, you've immediately spotted why we are doing this in addition to the other blocks, because this looks super intimidating, right? You're like, okay, I made that economy block. I can count to, you know, 16. I think it was actually 13. You're like, I can count to 16, 13, whatever. But this looks really complicated. And this is where it is absolutely key to just go one piece at a time, okay? Pull out Johnny Cash. Play it on the iPad as you're going and just go one piece at a time, okay? Because it's the exact same principles. It's just got weird shaped pieces, okay? So I've stitched my two together. I've folded my paper back. I'm going to trim, okay? And then I fold that piece of black open. Exact same principles. 
as what we did before. Okay. Annette, uh, someone else mentioned as well. Yeah. Um, so dot, yes, yeah, some of the folks who signed up really early went ahead and got started in December. So that means that when we get you into the Kajabi, you'll already see the penguin waiting for you. Um, those of you who sign up with me before the end of the year, you will go ahead and get your um, first box will be the December box. Okay, so you don't have to wait to kick off in the new year because we're in that weird part of the year where it's like, what day is it? What day of the week? What am I doing? Why not sit around a piece of penguin, right? So depending on which box of thread you ordered, you'll get the December box first. If you wait and you sign up in January, um, then you'll start with the January box and you'll get threads all the way through January. So we've got a little bit of a rolling start going just because I didn't want to make y'all sit around and wait. Just, I just, that didn't sound as fun this time. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with this pink. I'm gonna cut off a strip. And I usually will just cut off like a two or three inch strip unless I know I've got some bigger pieces coming and then I'll chop off something bigger. But it just gives me bits to work with. Okay. Make sure that second piece stays flipped open. Line up the third piece. I like to line up the edge of the fabric parallel to where I'm stitching. Um, Varushka over at Pride and Joy Quilting, at least some of the time, would take issue with this. Varushka is a master of making sure that all of her pieces are on grain as she's pieced them. And this is why she wins ribbons at shows, okay? Notice these are very small pieces, so I am pinning each one as I'm going. So just hold it in place as I'm getting up under my machine here. Uh, Barbara says, this is the thread for quilting. It is for piecing and quilting, especially if you choose the 50 weight option. So um, Color Builders is a thread subscription as well as a block of the month. So it's an amazing way to build up your collection of Aurifil thread to have a really beautiful rainbow of options in your sewing room. I absolutely will rain. Don't you worry. I'm going to do a couple of sections on this uh, penguin, and then we're going to actually talk about the block of the month because I've made a lot of allusions to it, and I don't want uh, to leave y'all hanging too long. All right. Now, I am using the penguin as an example, because it is the piece that we're working on right now at String and Story. But these principles of what I'm showing you of this more complex foundation paper piecing apply to other patterns as well. Okay, so just know if you're here and you're like, okay, well, but I want to do Violet Craft. I want to do whoever. These are going to give you that the same skills that you need for those as well. I just think it's important for y'all to get to see three different complexities of foundation paper piecing to really understand how the technique works. All right, fold it back, trim it off. Now, one of y'all asked higher up it's great thread for machine embroidery too. Kate is exactly right. So Orifil 40 and 50 weight um, is what I use for everything. I use it for piecing. I use it for quilting. I use it for long arming. Kate uses it for machine embroidery. Kate is trying to get me to use it for more machine embroidery. Uh, all of the above. <laughs> all right. Let's see. One of y'all. Um, great question, Carol. I'll be there in just a second. Oh my gosh, Alicia, you've made my whole day. All right, I gotta throw this up on the screen. This makes me so happy. I thought that I would never attempt foundation paper piecing, but after watching this, I think I can attempt it. Alicia, my whole goal is to guide you to quilt with confidence. And if, if I've changed your opinion of FPP today, that means I've done a good job. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, one of y'all up here, uh, Kate uh, Bergeron asked about connecting the pieces together, okay? Um, I don't have any complex ones put together. The thing you're going to want to watch for, where's my B? Let's cut out B and we'll mock this up with paper for y'all. Paper scissors. Mm 
Now, any foundation paper piecing pattern worth its salt is going to make sure that you have directions for how the pieces go together. And I probably should have checked to make sure that A and B go together first. Let's see. No, they don't. Of course not. Okay. Um, I'll show the, I'll show y'all this diagram so y'all get an idea of how this works. So see how this shows. This is also numbered, right? So you're going to put C and D together, and then they're going to go to B, um, and then they're going to go to E, and then A is going to slip on top of that, right? So all see how these diagrams have come. They like you go through here, then you connect. And it's building bigger and there's all these directions inside there, right? So it's like it becomes like a puzzle, but you'll line up those seam allowance lines to know how to piece it together. And you'll want to make sure that that stitching line is lined up with the stitching line of the other one. So you won't remove the papers until all these pieces are put together. Does that make sense? That I, It's okay if you're like, eh, maybe, okay? Because it is, it's complex. And it's the same principle of you just got to take it one section at a time, okay? Now, one of y'all asked about how there's all this lovely quilting, thank you, by the way, um, on the block. And you'll notice that for all of the blocks, actually, that there's quite a bit of quilting going on. The elephant actually has quilting on the animal as well as the background. And yes, I have blogs and videos on how to do that quilting. So I created quilting plans for every single animal. And then the quilting plan that I chose, I videoed myself doing it um, as a tutorial for y'all. So yes, that is included as part of the block of the month. All right, let's worm, worm, worm. Now, something else that I will do, let me put this over here. So see, this is five, this tiny little section here. I will put my thumbnail on where the line is and kind of flip back to make sure that my fabric is over the line enough for stitching. Okay. And I do that as these start to get bulky and there are sections that get trickier to see through my light box. I will use that as a guide to help get that in the right place. And it's incredible how sometimes these smaller pieces are actually more challenging to get pieced together than the bigger ones. Cause it's so just so dang hard to see what you're doing. All right. And then we fold and then we slice. Now, we are at 2.45, and I can keep going with this, um, but what I'm going to do for now is I am going to pause with where we're at right now. So you can see we've just started piecing around his little penguin eye. It doesn't really even look like anything yet. I'm going to pause. If you have any questions so far about FPP, especially this more complex part of foundation paper piecing, please ask in the chat. Um, I want to go ahead and get your questions answered. And then in just a second, I'm actually going to go through the block of the month, just like I told you that I would, uh, because I want to make sure uh, that if you are interested in that, if you're excited about foundation paper piecing and you want to tackle your first foundation paper piecing project in community um, and with someone who has made all the blocks and like knows what's up and can answer questions that you have the opportunity that you know what's included. All right. Um, John says, I love the, all the fabrics are tagged this year. Me too. It is taking more effort to do it that way, but I think it is well worth it for y'all. Absolutely. Kyle says, I've done FPP, but only basic blocks. Placing the fabric on section one is the hardest part. And once I get to section three or four, it begins to gel. Isn't that super fun? Um, and Annette says that she likes to add an eighth ruler for these tiny pieces. Um, I have heard that. I have not used it, as I mentioned. I'm, you would think that as a quilt shop owner, I would love all the gadgets but I am still a rather gadget resistant human. <laughs> Mary says, I just ordered the fabric bundle, about to order the BOM. Yes, Mary, I love that. Hang on for five seconds. I'm ordering the BOM, so I wanna talk through the thread options. Um, let's see. INX says, can I start the block of the month in September? Um, I'm gonna be really honest, I don't have an answer on that right now. We're doing some rolling enrollment right now. I don't know if we're gonna keep it open the whole year. I'm concerned that it will become administratively difficult to make sure that everyone is getting the right threads when they're supposed to get them if we extend rolling enrollment that long. So I'm not going to give you a hard no because it might be that we solve the admin and that it's fine, but I cannot promise it right now because I have to really see like how many signups we get in the first part of the year and does it get really complicated 
having folks at different parts of the block of the month at one time. Yep. Um, Lucy says, is it possible to have all the Aurafil uh, color builders in one package for the block of the month to save on shipping costs to Canada? So it's one fabric bundle and it's 12 thread boxes. Um, I think so, Lucy. So if you are international and you're interested, send me an email at hello at stringandstory.com. Okay. I'm going to exit this out because I'm getting feedback. Um, I'm going to send me an email and I'm going to investigate that for you. Okay. All right. Let me throw these slides up. And Sharon, I changed your mind. Yes. And yes, you'll get 20% off your fabric. That's ready. Um, yes, you can just get the patterns. All right. Let me go through and explain all this to y'all because you have been very patient with me teasing you about this amazing block of the month. And I really appreciate you sticking with me. Also, shout out to all of y'all for sticking with me for two hours. Thank you for your time. All right. And from here, with this time, you have two options. You could, you could go ahead and bounce. 30 of you have already done that. I told you at the beginning that was okay. And you could say, I'm going to go work on this, you know, on something else. Or you might just think, well, that's nice. That makes foundation paper piecing seem less scary. Um, and that's okay if, it, if it's just not for you right now, right? But I would love to give you the opportunity to put all this knowledge to use um, right away, okay? And the easiest way to do that is by jumping in on this block of the month, okay? So let's talk through the Orophil Endangered Species Block of the Month. If you have been around String and Story for a minute or you follow Orophil, then you will recognize this block of the month from 2021. It's the same one. So let me tell you right now, if you did Orophil Color Builders in 2021, you already have this block of the month. Unless you want the fabric, please do not give me any more money. I do not want you paying double if you've already done this. The exception to that is if you did it and for some reason your shop did not do the patterns and you don't have the patterns yet. Um, or if you did it with 40 weight thread and you want to do the thread subscription for a different thread set. Okay. But I just want to be super transparent that this block of the month circulated in 2021. We offered it here at String and Story. If you did it with me then, or you did it with your local quilt shop, I don't want you to accidentally pay again for something you already have. Okay. So Linda, I know it looks intimidating, but I've already taught you everything you need to know to complete this block of the month. I promise. I taught you all the skills today. Okay. So let's talk about what is included. The price of the block of the month, it is $45 a month, $44.99, is for your thread and shipping. Your pattern is included with your thread. And this is actually cheaper than buying thread spool by spool from me. So this is the most affordable way to buy or fill thread from String and Story. Okay. Um, and just about the most affordable way to buy it from a small quilt shop, period. All right. And it comes in these little boxes that are our collector boxes each month. There's the 40 weight box. This is, it's actually gonna be labeled with the animal of the month, right? And those are 40 weight, they're on green spools. There is the 50 weight, same colors, but it's 50 weight this time, all right? And then there is the 50 weight variegated. If you did Oracle Color Builders with me this year, please do not pick the variegated, you already have it, okay? I'm trying to put all the asterisks of transparency on here because I want to make sure y'all are stoked about it while it arrives in the mail. So each month you receive one box of thread in the mail and that's what your block of the month price covers, okay? Put the box face in the right way. Um, the pattern is included and the fabric is sold separately, okay? Um, the block of the month is excluded from the 20% off sale dot, just so you know. Subscriptions are not included in sales. Yeah, it's just set up differently on our website, all right? So you get your choice of thread, and by the end of the year, you have a beautiful rainbow of 36 spools of thread. Up here at the top, you can see the 50 weight solid. The bottom, you see the 40 weight solid. Same colors, just a different weight of thread. And then the variegated's over here on the right, all right? And of course, it includes as essentially a gift with your thread purchase, this amazing block of the month designed by Cassandra Bieber. One of my very favorite things about this block of the month is that we already ran it in 2021. Um, and that means that I know these patterns are awesome. I have made every single one. I've got two different versions here that I can show y'all. Um, and I, I just cannot say enough good things about how fun it is to put together. Okay. Um, and yes, Dot, and unless you did Color Builders this year. So more on that in just a second. Plus, because you're here with me, um, I have created resources on every single one of these blocks. These are videos and blogs that break down important tips for creating your project. So 
Sometimes we talk about what is a quilting plan and how to make quilting plans. Some of the blogs are about stitching over bulky seams. Some of the blogs are about different free motion quilting foot and when you might use different feet on different sections of this project, okay? And then it also includes three different levels, intro, intermediate, and more, or intro, beginner, and advanced. Nope, intro, beginner, intermediate. <laughs> quilting plans, I think it's two to three options for each one. For every single block, so, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like five to nine possible quilting plans for every single block, and then I made a video of the quilting plan that I chose. So really from the moment you're gathering your fabric until the moment you are quilting your quilt, I am holding your hand, okay? I want, I want you to know that you have support in this, all right? So each month's blog includes education on relevant topics, such as quilting over bulky seams, et cetera, as well as a video of me actually working on mine. All right. So Endangered Species is going to be the FPP party of the year, and we want you to be a part of it. How do you do that? You do that by going to stringandstory.com forward slash orafil color builders. Oops, I messed up my URL. <clears throat> Technology is not my friend today, y'all. I feel like the universe was like, we're going to make this hard by making sure that you get strep. And then I'm like, no, I refuse. I'm going to make this the best ever anyway. And now the universe is like, fine, we're going to, you know, handicap you with your, or hamstring you with your technology. Anyway, I digress. So the Orville Color Builders thread subscription of Blog of the Month includes a monthly delivery of three large schools of Orville thread in your choice of the three colorways, which I'll speak to more in just a second. An exclusive block of the month, these foundation paper piece patterns by Cassandra Beaver. And then I've created those bonus quilting plan resources. Okay. Um, oh, Susan. Susan says, can't wait. Holly is an amazing teacher and answers all your questions with great patience and knowledge. Susan, thank you so much. This is a monthly cost of $44.99. Asterisk for my international people. This might actually be on. Oh, we're not there yet. Hold on. So why do we love Orifil Color Builders? I love that it combines three of my favorite things, quality supplies, gorgeous quilts, and the opportunity to grow in the Quilting Rockstars community, okay? So will I be offering a fabric bundle like last time? Yes. Can you just subscribe to the thread subscription with the patterns and not get the fabric bundle? Yes. That's why the fabric is separate. I get asked that question a lot, like, why isn't the fabric included? Um, one, that would up your monthly expense. Two, it means that if you have fabric you want to use, then you'd end up with like double fabric, right? I want to give you the opportunity to sew from your stash as part of this. If you're like, nope, I love the idea that you've already got the light, mediums, and darks picked out, then after you sign up for the subscription, go get that fabric bundle, especially because it's 20% off right now, okay? Can I ship overseas for the first time ever? Yes. For the last two years, I've had to tell y'all no that I can't do that. Um, this time, yes, I believe the solution is exactly what was brought up in the chat, um, which is if you are international and you want to join us, you will pay all at once. That's the only like real disadvantage for y'all with this is if you want all the threads or if you want the fabric bundle as well, you'll pay all at once and I will send it all to you all at once. And then your patterns will be released month to month. Okay. So it's not a perfect solution, but I've never been able to offer our blocks of the month internationally before. So I'm really excited that we are going to have that opportunity. So if you are an international rock star and you would like to do this block of the month with us, please email me at hello at stringandstory.com um, and we will figure out the best way for us to do the billing on that. Okay. That way everything ships at once and you're not paying a trillion dollars extra in shipping. Okay. All righty. Um, can you buy just one month? I saw this question come up or can you buy just the block pattern without doing the block of the month? The answer is no. So this is a licensed pattern that designer Cassandra Beaver has licensed to Orifil. Um, and the reason that it stays within the subscription is because she gets paid based on the solutions. And it's very, very important that designers in our industry get paid for their work. That's how we honor them as an artist. Um, and that's how we make it sustainable for them to continue creating such high quality patterns. So unfortunately, that means that this pattern is not available separately. It is only available as part of the 12-month subscription, okay? Um, and do you pay for the first month now? Yes, because I'm going to go ahead and send you your thread, like as soon as I can get them out the door, okay? <laughs> um, and as soon as we uh, wrap up here, here in the next few hours, a bunch of y'all who just signed up, I will be adding you into that course platform called Kajabi that I mentioned to make sure that you have access to your penguin pattern right away so you can get started, okay? Okay. Um, oh, this is a great question, and it has not been asked. Um, 
what brand is the fabric bundle? It is the Painter's Palette Solids from Paintbrush Studio Fabrics. All of our solids at String & Story are Painter's Palette Solids at this time. We carry the full line. It's all 210 or something colors. Um, so all of these are Painter's Palette Solids. If you've never worked with PBS Solids before, um, think the like thickness of Kona, like thick and luscious like Kona, but soft and like a finer weave, more like Moda Bella Solids. So they're like, Kona and Moda got together. You know what I mean? Um, so they don't fray the way that Kona does. You can, I mean, I can show y'all on this. You can see. I mean, I just managed to grab the end and pull the bit off, right? But I don't have fraying everywhere, even on this bias cut that I just made. Um, but they're nice and soft while still being thick. They're not like see-through or anything like that. Okay. All right. What questions have I missed? Let's see. All right, let me throw this back up. So stringandstory.com forward slash Aurafil color builders is where you can go. And the reason I'm sending you there and not directly to the shop page is because all of this information that I'm saying out loud is written on that page. And I hope that our time together has showed y'all. I really like y'all to be able to make informed decisions about things that you're purchasing from String and Story, especially anytime we're doing courses or subscriptions like this. So that way you can read through everything and really understand like how it all works um, and not, you know, feel overwhelmed by the information. Okay. Um, oh, Jean, this is so kind. Jean says, this is an awesome project. I ordered it in 2021 and started the blogs. Then life took over. The directions are great. And with Holly Ann, it makes it even better. Jean, I love that. And all of y'all who did this in 2021 with me, you still have your lifetime access to those patterns. Okay. All right. I see a few more comments and I have a question I know I want to answer. Okay. Um, one of y'all dot says, I like the idea of the two solid and one variegated. Can you do that too? No, it is two variegated and one solid. Um, that is in the boxes that are labeled for flowers. It's two variegated and a solid, um, or all solids. So let me speak to the three different, uh, thread options for a minute. Okay. The original color builders is 50 weight solid threads. This was originally done with actually a different block of the month, but we're able to offer the choice this year. Thank you, Orpho. We love you working with us on that. Um, if you've never done a color builders before, this is what I would recommend. I would recommend the 50 weight solid because um, you're going to have a gorgeous rainbow with 36 50 weight threads at the end of the year. And those are going to be amazing for piecing and quilting. It's a perfect way to build out your thread library. Okay. If you know um, that you like to do a lot of garment sewing or a lot of embroidery, I would consider doing the 40 weight. Personally, I just prefer the 50 weight. So given the choice between solid thread and 50 weight and solid thread and 40 weight, I'm going to choose the 40 weight, okay? Um, if, however, you say did the 2020 color builders and you did the 2022 color builders and what you're missing from your collection is the 40 weight, do that, okay? If you have a lot of solid thread or maybe you've been using Aurifil for a while and even if you've never done color builders, you've built up a good library of 50 weight solid threads, really consider choosing this variegated option. They are beautiful. Y'all know I've been gushing about them all year. Um, and it's an amazing way to add colors into your collection that you may not choose otherwise and that I can guarantee will surprise you with how beautiful and versatile they are. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, Barbara, did I answer your question about 40 weight versus 50 weight? Let me know. Um, Vicky says, I've been doing FPP for quite a while now, but some of the techniques I've learned here today will make my process much more efficient and enjoyable. Vicky, I love that. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. Let's see. Oh, Linda, you're so welcome. I'm so glad that y'all have enjoyed our time together. Uh, Kay Crosswood said, I just ordered the fabric and subscribed for the thread and patterns. This will be my first attempt at FPP. I love that. Thank you so much for being here. All right. So rock stars. Any follow-up questions that I can answer for you, please let me know. I would love to see you join me inside of Orifil Color Builders. Um, if you have questions about which thread is the right fit for you, please let me know. Um, it's really hard to go wrong with Orifil is really the great news. For those of you that may be here and the block of the month is not the right thing for you right now, or maybe you have another FPP pattern that you are working on, do consider snagging the daylight wafer that we talked about at the beginning for your light box and the clear cutting mat. And the add a quarter ruler. I think those tools will make your journey a lot more enjoyable. Um, but above all, I hope that I have inspired you 
to try foundation paper piecing, even if it was something that maybe you wouldn't have considered trying before. Um, I hope that you feel empowered with this new technique. And I hope that you're excited to be connected to this community of quilting rock stars um, and a place that you can come and you can learn and you can expand your quilting horizons while connecting with quilters around the world. So rock stars, I would love, as I mentioned, to see you in Keller Builders. Before we go, I do want to play one more show and tell. I want to hold up Kate Brennan's version of this. And this was, this is Orifil's sampler. You may have seen it hanging at an Orifil booth at a show near you. Um, I had the incredible delight of long arming this beauty. And I want to hold it up and show it to you because I really want to show y'all how, even though these are very heavily pieced blocks and heavily quilted blocks as well, because I, you know, basically only believe in custom quilting. <laughs> um, this makes a really lovely throw. Um, and I don't know if I'm actually going to have the time to pull it off this year, but th last year or two years ago when I was making these, I did them all as mini quilts to be able to hang decoratively. Um, and this year, I'm really kind of hoping that I have time to make a throw. This quilt is so soft. Even with all those layers of fabric and all that quilting, it is soft, it is snugly, and it is beautiful. And it would make an absolutely um, amazing addition to your quilts in your home if you are an animal lover. Um, it would also make an incredible gift if you have an animal lover in your family. Um, both of my boys are begging, begging for their own versions of it because we are very sciencey people at our house. Okay. All right. Rock stars. Let's see. Kyle says, thank you, man. This is helpful. Ordered the fabric. Now we'll spend time fretting over which block of the month program to pick. <laughs> I love that. Oh, Pauline, thank you so much. I am so glad that y'all have all had a wonderful time. Um, let's see. Don't see the clear mat. Let me grab you a link. Do, 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 do. Oop, that's not the right link. Shop. It's the wafer one cutting mat. It doesn't look clear in the picture. It looks white in the picture. That's probably the challenge. Give me just a second and I will drop the link for you. Hopefully we haven't sold out already. If we have, I'll order more. There's no more light boxes in stock. Y'all are incredible. Hold please. I can add more because I can order more. Y'all cleaned me out. All right. If you order a light box after this moment, <coughs> know that I will have to special order it. So it will take a second to get to you, but we're going to make that happen. All right. Let's see. <coughs> oh my gosh. Y'all, I'm so sorry. Tried very hard not to be coughing in y'all's faces this whole time. Come on. Here we go. All right, so just know that those will be custom ordered. I'm, I will put special order on here so that y'all know. But I am delighted to order them for you. All right, huzzah! Y'all are incredible. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy New Year. I, what a delight to get to be together one last time before the end of the year for a fun educational opportunity. Um, like I said, those of you who can go back and watch the replay from the beginning, uh, just feel free to skip ahead about five minutes. We're just solving technical issues for the first part of that. All right. Any last questions I can answer before I go? Um, what batting and backing did you use on the quilt? Um, it is Hobbs Cotton Supreme batting. And this was a, a Ruby Star Society print that I had on hand. So this is like a, I think this is Robert Kaufman linen that Kate used. Um, and then I just put a regular quilting cotton on the back. And you can see I stitched in the ditch around all the animals. How fun is that? They're like little reliefs on the back. And I matched the thread color to the fabric. So I used the like thread from the box. So this is pink thread. So there's 12 different colors of fabric on the front of there. Isn't that great? <laughs> all right. Um, I am going to rest my throat, but I'm going to get busy bundling your orders. Y'all are phenomenal. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you soon. <laughs>